Since the main topic of the second day of European Rover Challenge 2022 is the Moon, it's time to learn a bit more about the lunar exploration. Let's welcome Maria Antonietta Perino from Thales Alenia Space, who will join us online for the presentation about that topic. Maria Antonietta, can you hear us? I can hear you fine, and you can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you well. We can also see your presentation, so I would say the virtual stage is yours. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, it was not that easy this morning to establish the connection between Italy and Poland, uh, but uh, we made it. And in a similar way, for sure, we'll uh, carry on the connection between our beautiful planet and the moon as soon as we manage to send again a uh, representative uh, of the humankind back on our satellite. So let me start to share with you the main reason why it makes sense to go back to the moon and this time to stay without stopping there because we have Mars as the next place we want to be with people. So why we explore space? There are many, many different reasons. First of all, there is an important uh, scientific push. Uh, as much as, as more as we explore, uh, as more as we have options to find answer to the big whys. Where did we come from? Are we alone? Is, are there other places where we could uh, learn where to live and work? For sure, there are political interest, uh, leadership, national prestige. Uh, exploration is a push to develop uh, new technologies, new business opportunity, international cooperation. We cannot, we cannot do Moon and Mars by, you know, uh, ourselves. It's not a matter of a single nation. It's a matter of humankind. So we go there together. And there is a, a big plus related to stimulate uh, in the new generation interest in science, technology, engineering, mathematics. You can perceive that there, this very moment, uh, uh, around you, you have so many crew uh, of students uh, that are trying to solve uh, the, the locomotion aspect, uh, and the communication aspect between the rover and the base and so on. And for sure there is a, a, a good reason to try and explore because we are looking also for a second place where we could live. The starting point is very close to us, 400 kilometers above us, around us, I should say, the International Space Station. This beautiful piece of engineering, um, we are a little bit late, so I, I cannot go um, into the details, but uh, it's a sum of uh, collaboration. So all the major space agencies have contributed uh, to offer, uh, to, to, to develop the possibility to have uh, an orbiting laboratory where anybody can work in peace. Uh, and then what? Uh, and then for sure, we, we, we want to export uh, our capability to live uh, a, a, how can I say, in space further uh, around the moon first and on the lunar surface. So we are talking about the gateway that is current in, developing, in development and then the lunar surface in infrastructure. New players, uh, for sure the, the, the whole story started uh, a few years ago with a strong commitment by uh, the American president uh, to bring uh, people back to the moon. Uh, to do that, uh, we started together, uh, NASA and DISA, uh, to develop a new transportation system, Orion. We are all waiting uh, these very days uh, to see the first uh, um, unmanned launch uh, to, to try and, and verify the, 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 uh, the capability of this new piece of beautiful infrastructure. Uh, I already mentioned the gateway, so Orion will bring the first astronauts uh, uh, in orbit around the moon. Um, beside the American, for sure, also China is developing a very interesting capability uh, with the Chinese space station. The Emirates, uh, among the new players, for sure, space is changing quickly because we have the private sector 
that came into the loop uh, with a big step. So uh, Blue Origin, Sierra Nevada, SpaceX, uh, Virgin and so on. And not only uh, companies, uh, but also governments. Uh, just to mention one, Luxembourg, uh, few years ago, eh, already started to, to, to support, uh, to really to devote resources for the development of capabilities focused to reach, uh, for example, um, asteroids and mine the many resources that we can find there. Uh, so the NASA vision is really now uh, become a, an international vision uh, to go back to the moon and to bring finally uh, the first human on, on the lunar surface. So I already touched upon the need to develop a new transportation vehicle, Orion, uh, for which uh, uh, Europe is really contributing heavily. So NASA um, uh, is providing the, the pressurized capsule, but uh, the, the, the um, uh, service module, the European service module, is provided by ESA, and uh, uh, there is uh, a, an industrial consortium led by Airbus with our company responsible to provide propulsion, electrical power, thermal control and consumables. The schedule of the flights, uh, we, we, we all know, eh? uh, hopefully before end September we'll have the first flyby without the crew, followed by a crew at flyby in 2024 and finally uh, the moon landing in 25. So why the moon? Um, many reasons. For sure the moon is, is uh, very close, so it's a possible destination for humankind. Moon is a very stable and interesting, um, let me call it uh, planet, it's a satellite, but uh, uh, indeed uh, uh, there is a common story with our planet. So if we go there, we can learn uh, and discover what happened uh, uh, to our planet uh, centuries ago. There are many resources on the moon. I, in the next view, graph, I will point uh, uh, the most interesting ones. And the moon uh, uh, is a possible place where to validate the technologies that will be needed uh, to move uh, further toward Mars. Um, is the moon very benign? Not at all. The moon is tricky, and this is why we love it, because uh, we believe that we have the capability uh, to, how can I say, to protect ourselves from this very harsh environment. There is no atmosphere, so that implies that all the radiation, the galactic radi radiation, uh, make uh, to the surface. Uh, so we will need, uh, for example, to protect our habitat, our, our outpost, uh, by using the local regolith. Talking about the regolith, uh, the regolith is a very interesting bunch of uh, possible resources interesting materials that uh, if we learn how to, you know, separate them can, can turn into resources. So we, we have a lot of oxygen in the regolith, link uh, tied to silicon, iron, calcium, aluminium, magnesium. So by, by splitting this material, um, we can use the oxygen for the base itself, but also as propellant. We can use the silicon to produce solar cells and so on. Um, why it makes sense to start with the gateway? Because from there, uh, again, we can validate the technologies before using them to mass. We can also study uh, this, uh, the, 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 how can I say, the challenges are not only technological ones, but also psychological and physiological ones. So uh, the gateway will offer us the possibility to check how people react to um, long duration mission far away from our planet. Uh, we will also have the possibility to check and, and validate uh, long term autonomous system and to teleoperate from uh, lunar orbit, the rovers, uh, like the rovers that you guys are building now. Uh, so the, the idea is that uh, 
From the Gateway, we can teleoperate the robotic system that can prepare the outpost development. And then for sure, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, an, an additional laboratory. So we have a laboratory in orbit around our planet. It makes sense to, to build one in orbit around our satellite. Uh, how is coming together the Gateway? Uh, by as for the space station, for the International Space Station, we are uh, we plan to assemble together uh, different modules, uh, and and I'm very proud uh, to share with you this morning that we are we our company Tarsalenia Space in Torino. We are welding the modules, so the design is already completed. We are really manufacturing the modules. So. Uh, starting with uh, the HALO, uh, uh, that is an American uh, module, our company will provide the structure. The HALO will be the first seed, the first uh, um, element of this infrastructure that will be uh, visited. So, for, at least at the beginning, uh, it will not be, uh, we, we won't have a permanent uh, occupation of this space. Uh, Few years after, we will connect HALO with this international habitat for which we are prime uh, contractor, and we will provide uh, the Esprit module uh, for which our company in France is a prime contractor. And Esprit will uh, will provide the communication, life support capability, and refueling capability. Uh, and this picture speaks uh, by itself. Uh, this will be the view that the astronaut will enjoy approaching uh, for docking uh, the gateway before uh, entering the lander to land on the moon. Uh, it's not easy uh, to, to, to plan for uh, the surface infrastructure, but uh, uh, we are working uh, in collaboration uh, ac across the borders. Uh, we have been working for many years. Uh, you see in this picture the key building block. So we will need for sure a lunar uh, lander uh, to, to develop, to, to, to deliver uh, the different elements to the lunar surface. And for sure, we will need an ascent vehicle for people to be able to go back uh, to the gateway first and to Earth. Uh, uh, for sure. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the, the, the different elements of the base will need to be protected against radiation and also for thermal control. Uh, and the logical idea is to use the local regolith to do so. Uh, we are currently working at the design and development, development of greenhouses to complement the diet of the astronauts. A few years ago, we sent to Antarctic an experiment uh, of, of a small greenhouse that uh, worked beautifully. Um, we will need uh, a robust uh, telecommunication and navigation uh, architectural link around the moon both to provide the link between uh, uh, ourselves, uh, ground support on Earth, uh, and, but also uh, among the different elements moving uh, on the lunar surface. Uh, talking about the moving uh, elements, uh, so rovers, in addition to the unpressurized rover, we are designing also pressurized rover that will allow the uh, the crew members to explore uh, without the need to wear a spacesuit. Uh, well, I, I, I need to, to go quickly, but I cannot avoid saying that yes, we master the capability to design a pressurized module for the International Space Station, um, but to design modules for deep space uh, is different. Uh, we will need uh, to provide uh, better radiation protection, uh, small uh, uh, autonomous uh, capability. So we are currently working at this uh, 
new modules uh, that uh, we will uh, uh, start validating with the Gateway, but uh, that will soon become uh, the modules uh, planned for the spacecraft to Mars. And uh, just uh, uh, let me close by saying that uh, we didn't start only yesterday, uh, but many, many years ago, uh, we, we presented the first concept for the moon base, you see beginning of uh, uh, 2000, and uh, our concept is still there in the Museum of Science and Digital Industry of Chicago. So uh, we do believe and hope that in the near future, this uh, type of uh, uh, capability will be finally exported uh, to the surface of our satellite. Thanks for your attention. Uh, and uh, I'm there with you uh, to, to share to, to comments, to, to get any, any curiosity, any question you might have. Thanks a lot.